The OnePlus Nord series of devices have been around for quite some time. They're slightly more cost effective than what we see from OnePlus typically, so they're more cost conscious and feature rich, meaning bang for the buck experience is definitely very high here. You get way more than what you're paying for. And more so than not within the last few years, you've also probably noticed that a MediaTek processor has been powering this experience. And what I like about that is, even though essentially we're seeing it in more of the cost conscious and of course, bang for the buck budget devices, we're starting to see a very different shift here with the Nord series, the full number series. This is the OnePlus Nord 3. One of the biggest thing is that this is powered by the Dimensity 9000, a flagship processor from MediaTek for 2022 that still rocks in 2023. This is TK and this is my review of the OnePlus Nord 3. Let's check it out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. What we have in front of us is the actual box and we obviously have it in that nice beautiful green color. We have a nice little case that comes inside with the, uh, with the OnePlus logo and of course a protection cover for the USB-C port on the bottom. We also have the 80 watt charger that's included in the box and that's going to be able to power up this 5000 milliamp here battery that we have in here and charge it up very very fast. There is no wireless charging on this device so wired is going to be the best experience and an 80 watt charger included in the box is always going to be nice and of course they include the USB-C to A cable to be able to charge up our device. Uh, there is no gangster uh, support here this is primarily just a charger with Superbook for our OnePlus devices. Lastly we have the membership card for the Red Cable Club and of course the Nord sticker and of course some more information in here with the SIM ejector tool. So as we talked about at the beginning of the video, this is powered by the Dimensity 9000 octa-core processor. Now the display size that we have here is a 6.74 inch display. It's an AMOLED display with 120 hertz refresh rate resolution. It's like one of the biggest differences that we have in here is the improvement over the display tech. We have a 5000 mAh battery charged with that 80 watt charger that comes in the box, 16 gigs of RAM with the ability of adding an additional up to 12, so up to 28 gigs of RAM. The 12 are basically page file system. They take some storage out of your 256 gig storage here to be able to allow that to work with your RAM. The front facing camera is a 16 megapixel camera present in the front and we have a triple camera set up in the back, 50 megapixel primary sensor, an eight megapixel for an ultra wide and a two megapixel for the most part, a main and an ultra wide. It is running Android 13 on top of Oxygen OS 13.1, the latest version available directly from OnePlus. And I actually just got an update earlier, uh, late last night, early this morning to be able to update our device. And again, this is the OnePlus Nord 3 5G. I've been using it in the US here. Let's go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi section. I wanna show you guys real quick. I've been using it on T-Mobile here in the US. Now, although it's not showing 5G here, the speed test that I'm going to show you guys right now is not indicative of how fast the connection is. And I'll say that's because I was able to run my speed and before my data ran out on my, on my device's uh, SIM card that I have in here. It did log in as a 5G connection directly on T-Mobile. What I want to show you guys is how crazy the download speed was on my device. And it used literally that much of data to be able to run to get this test. The upload speed should be able to go all the way up to 70. It, again, depending on the area where you are with the signal strength, it just for me, I ran out of data in the middle of it. So, but that's not a big issue at all. I think the big biggest thing for me is how much compatibility it has with US carriers, specifically for me, T-Mobile in my area in Los Angeles. So it's definitely very nice. And it also shows to what uh, MediaTek is doing with the modem support. And it actually has a much better support than what you used to see in the past. But we talked about the beautiful display. It's an AMOLED display, flat display, very nice. Depending on your experience, this is definitely going to be really, really nice. A volume rocker on the left side. On the right side, we have the power button as well as the, the actual notification slider. This is something that's very unique. We saw this obviously with the Nord 2T, very nice. The camera stack is on the back, the LED flashes. Again, no wireless charging, but it definitely feels very nice. The material that we have on the back is very good. Flat sides to be able to have a really good grip on our device. On the top, we have access to the microphone, a secondary speaker, as well as the IR blaster to be able to control RTV. So there's a built-in IR remote. This is, again, one of the really nice things we see internationally, except for the US. It definitely provides us a very nice, well-rounded experience. Stereo speakers with the top earpiece, as well as the bottom firing speaker. Dual SIM tray available here on the bottom. bottom. And of course, the USB-C to be able to charge our device with that 80-watt charger that's included in the box. When it comes to Geekbench scores, I wanted to give you guys an experience of how does the Dimensity 9000 stack up with some of the other options that we have on the market right now. 
I ran the Geekbench score in two different forms. Since OnePlus devices allow us to run performance mode for gaming experiences, that was also going to give us a little bit of seeing how the difference kind of goes from there. So standard mode out of the box, just turning it on and running Geekbench 6. I got 1569 and 3443 for the multi-core. If we jump over to uh, directly into the performance mode, 1596 was the in four room there and 4185 on the multi-core. You could definitely see the improvement, the big jump between 3443 to 4185 uh, using the brand new processor. So the Dimensity 9000 will not disappoint. It is no slouch. Again, it's a flagship processor in a Nord. This is a big deal for device for, for Nord lovers because now that gives us the ability of running and hanging with some of the other players on the market. And one of the other things that I really like about this, as I mentioned to you guys in the beginning, if we go into the settings tab, we go into display and brightness, we have dark mode, all the different options that we had in the past, display size, font size, and all of that. Image and sharpener, video uh, color boost is available. But one of the other things that I really like about this is that screen refresh rate. Typically, Nord devices have been limited to about 90 frames per second refresh rate in the past, and that's one of the things they've been doing to keep the experience to the price point that you're trying to get into. This device has no stops there. We have a beautiful large display AMOLED higher than 1080p resolution, and we're also able to push it all the way under, uh, all the way up to 120 hertz to be able to enjoy our games. And you're able to customize it if you want to have it in auto section to be able to save some battery, but that's going to be one of the biggest things. Last thing, if you really, really want to be able to push this, go straight into the battery section all the way down to the bottom under more settings. Settings. This is where you're able to turn on the high performance mode whenever you want to be able to push this device to its full potential, allowing you to not only use up, unfortunately, more battery, but it gives you that throughput that you've been wanting if you want to render video, you want to be able to get that best gaming experience, this is pretty much where you do. And one thing to mention, though, is that this does get triggered on depending on how your gaming profile is set for your games. Of course, we want to talk about the camera and the capabilities that we have. We obviously have 4K at 60 frames per second resolution recording on the front facing camera, on the rear facing camera, and it's the primary 50 megapixel. And when we get to the front-facing camera, we are limited to 1080p resolution. That's something that we've seen in the past. We have photo, portrait, more options as far as pro mode, extra HD, panorama, macro. Of course, we have dual view video that allows us to use the front-facing and the rear-facing camera at the same time. That macro mode is something that is going to be utilizing that two megapixel sensor that we have on the back, and that's going to be the best experience if you're looking to use macro photography. Otherwise, for the most part, let's go ahead outside and do a quick test of the front-facing and the rear-facing camera experience on the brand new Nord 3. Starting off with the front-facing camera, hopefully you're able to hear me. There's a little bit of wind and it's about 108 today, but I'm trying to shoot this video for you guys in the shade. The biggest thing I'll probably say here is 1080p is going to be the maximum we can shoot here on the front-facing camera, but it's something that we're used to from OnePlus. Uh, I think there was only one Nord that actually had 4K, but for the most part, you know, 1080p is going to be a pretty decent experience for video calls, uh, recording TikToks or anything like that. Let's go ahead and switch over to the main sensor on the back and of course get that 4K 60 goodness. Now switching into the main sensor on the back, the biggest thing obviously here is the 4K 60 frames per second resolution. Now this is supported without any AI enhancement. If you do turn that on, you're automatically dropped down to 1080p and also it's only supported on the main sensor. So if you want to be able to record this, this is going to be the best resolution. The main sensor on the back is giving us that 4K 60 and this obviously will be the best experience on this device. 1080p on the front, 4K 60 on the back and of course all the other powered experiences by the Dimensity 9000 on this device. As you saw there, the video obviously looks absolutely fantastic. That primary sensor on the back is always going to be the best experience on most OnePlus devices, and it definitely does not disappoint here. The next thing we're going to talk about, obviously, is sound and some of the experiences we're able to do to customize the experience here. We have Dolby Atmos configuration built in, so that's going to be playing our EQ to customize the sound between videos, uh, playing games, or even have it in more of an adaptive mode. Turning this function on not only supports the video, also supports you getting that really good experience from the speakers and, of course, Bluetooth headphones if you're going to be connecting them there. But let's go ahead and go directly into YouTube. We're going to play our favorite song. This is Alex Grindo Jumbo by NCS Release. We're going to go ahead and put the volume at 100% just to be able to test out the stereo speakers that we have in here. Jack it up. sounds really really nice and I really like that nice little launcher that we have on the side here that enables us to actually do background stream which enables us to actually put the YouTube player in the background and still allow it to play as if it's sitting on our main screen. Very nice and very simple 
And of course, what you saw there or you heard there with the audio is that they sound really, really good. Stereo speakers, they definitely get pretty loud and they don't get any tingy at 100%. So you should not be disappointed using that. And of course, enjoying content on your device, such as movies or anything like that, like let's say watching things on Netflix. Again, beautiful, large AMOLED panel is definitely a big improvement over what we used to have in the past. The next thing we're gonna talk about obviously is jumping into the game experience. I'm gonna go ahead and lower the volume and go ahead and hit the play button. I've been playing Call of Duty Mobile on this, absolutely fantastic. The latest season, as you probably heard on the desktop has been announced. So we'll hopefully see some of the new improvements on the mobile side in the near future. But one of the biggest things that you definitely wanna be able to run here is the launcher, the game launcher that enables us to actually customize the experience between balance mode, power saver mode, and of course, performance or pro gamer that enables us to push our device up to the limit of what we're able to do. One of the biggest things I love about them is the ability of customizing, of course, the championship mode, notification, call blocker, screen top. But one of the main, main feature is this, the ability of seeing the frame rate, GPU and CPU usage, and of course, allowing the device to actually give us that nice information as we're playing. So you know exactly what the rate is. You can record your video, you can customize a video changer, volume setting, autoplay, all the different things that you'd love to do. And of course, see that custom data right there on the thing, on the actual player before you start playing. It is very exciting to see what a Domestity 9000 can do on a Nord 3. The collaboration between MediaTek and OnePlus is known for many years. And of course, we are benefiting from this on the Nord line, because again, that bang for the buck experience. We get way more than what we're paying for, and we are getting a flagship processor that still hangs with almost any processor that's available in 2023. So the biggest thing that I really like about this is not only from the capabilities on gaming, the images that I'm sharing with you guys, of course, with the video recording, as we saw, leveraging the power of the Dimensity 9000 to get the really good experience out of the Sony IMX sensor that we have in the back, that 50 megapixel camera. And this is starting to feel more like a regular OnePlus device than it is a Nord. This is the weird experience that I really had a hard time pinning down what this device was giving me because it felt like I was using a full-fledged, let's say a T-Series OnePlus with some optimizations done to be able to give us that really good gaming experience there. We have 16 gigs of RAM, large storage. We have a large display at 120 Hertz refresh rate with an AMOLED panel. So there's a lot of improvements in here over what we used to see before. Again, more like a baby OnePlus 11 than it is a Nord. So it's stepping up very big. And I feel like MediaTek was able to carry that with the 9000 series. So fast charging, large battery, a lot of things to be loved about the OnePlus Nord 3. And one of the big things that really appealed to me is full support, at least in Los Angeles for T-Mobile bands on 5G. I was able to clock in faster connection speed than my Moto Edge 20, uh, Plus 2023. And that was crazy. If I didn't run out of data on that SIM card that I was testing the speed test on that one day, that would have been even more surprising on how much you're able to do with this device. Thank you very much to OnePlus and MediaTek for allowing me to check out the brand new OnePlus Nord 3. I hope that you like this and please let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Nord series? Do you wanna see more flagships like this or flagship experiences on Nord devices for that great bang for the buck? I'll see you.